Hi, everybody. I'm Hub Arches for Pro Football Weekly here with our preview of the game of the week for the 13th week of the NFL 2012 regular season. It's going to be the Seattle Seahawks visiting the Chicago Bears. The Bears in control of the NFC North right now. The Seahawks in a deadlock for the final wild card spot. Dan Park covers the Chicago Bears for us. Executive Editor Dan Arkish covers the Seattle Seahawks. And Dan, Seahawks had a scare, allegedly uh, possibly suspensions for their starting cornerbacks. Won't be a factor this weekend. Really, you look at this game, Seattle went into Chicago just about a year ago and pounded lumps on the Bears pretty good. Well, they certainly did, Hub. Uh, it was a 38-14 whipping, and they had four sacks and five turnovers. But the big obvious difference was uh, Caleb Haney was under center for the Bears, and now the Bears have Jay Kuttner back, so it's a, it's a big difference in that regard. But the one thing uh, you have to say about Seattle, on the road, they've just had this knack for falling apart uh, at the worst possible times, and that's what happened in Miami this uh, past week. So they really need to clean up their act and play better fundamental football. Yeah, the Seahawks just 1-5 of five on the road, Dan. The Chicago Bears certainly very good at home. Jay Cutler back. No big numbers. They're the lowest ranked offense in the NFL, but when Cutler is a quarterback, he seems to find a way to do enough to get them wins. That's right. They're in a much better place, obviously, with him on the field. Uh, the connection he has with Brandon Marshall, obviously, has been strong as any quarterback to receiver combo uh, so far we've seen this season. Uh, the question for the Bears has been, can they maintain balance on offense? And can that offensive line, which has been kind of a patchwork uh, unit the past couple weeks, uh, get through a game against a pass rush that has been really good at times? It was not last week with only one sack against the Dolphins, but uh, we know the problems the Bears have had protecting Cutler. Uh, will that become an issue again is uh, one of the big questions for this game. Well, then you look in particular at the Bears' injuries. They've been remarkably lucky with injuries the last three years or so, but now five guys going down last week in the key. Lance Lewis, their best offensive lineman done for the year, looks now like it'll be Chris Spencer on one side and Gabe Karimi, who was just benched to tackle, starting a guard. They did bring in Andre Giroud uh, from the, actually, Ravens, although he had his best years with the, with the Cowboys. That's right, and I think you still look at, you know, Jamarcus Webb as one of the key figures here. Karimi uh, playing out of place, but he actually did an okay job um, at guard when he came in against uh, the Vikings last week, surprisingly, I think, to a lot of people. Jonathan Scott at right tackle played pretty well. The Bears were encouraged with what they saw from him. Um, Roberto Garza is Roberto Garza. So for Jay Cutler, can Jamarcus Webb uh, continue to play decently? Um, and this one is uh, another thing we're going to be keeping our eye on. And Dan Arkish, of course, can Seattle exploit the Bears' offensive line now. Bruce Irvin drafted very high to be a pass rusher. Seven sacks, hasn't been a consistent factor. He's not a complete player, but Chris Clemens is the real deal. Um, can he exploit that Bears' weakness in the offensive line? Because if you don't pressure Cutler, you're going to have problems. Yeah, and uh, last last year, I believe, uh, Clemens had two sacks, and uh, he's a tough customer. Uh, he had gone on a stretch of about five games without a sack, but he had one in this last game. And him and Irvin together, uh, and let's not forget Jason Jones, the free agent addition, who... Uh, helps out in the inside and opens up opportunities for them. And I think uh, it's going to be a very tough matchup for this reshuffled Bear offensive line. So when you look at these two defenses, guys, what it probably comes down to is Marshawn Lynch against either Matt Forte or Mike Bush. We don't know, Dan, if Matt Forte is going to go or not. We know Marshawn Lynch was had a bad game last week after four pretty good ones. Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, they're, they're going to be determined to get him back on track. You know, he had four straight 100-yard games before that. Last year, he only had 42 yards, I believe, on 20 carries, but he also had two touchdowns. So I think it's going to be a real key uh, for those Bear uh, linebackers, or Lacker and I guess Briggs, uh, you know, to, to stop uh, Marshawn from uh, getting to that second level. And Dan Parr, as we talk, we don't know how serious the ankle with Matt Forte is. It cost him a game earlier in the season. This is a new injury. Michael Bush, one of the better number two backs in the league, but very different from Matt Forte. Doesn't give that bear offense nearly as much as Forte does. That's right. Not quite the complete back that Matt Forte is, but a very physical downhill punishing runner. Um, so he can wear out a defense if he's the guy that has to carry the load. We've seen him do that earlier in the season when Matt Forte was out with an injury and the Bears got through it. Um, he's a guy that kind of faded away there for a few weeks, but uh, the Bears, they ran the ball a ton against Minnesota, 39 times. They only averaged 2.9 yards per carry. Didn't have a run longer than eight yards in that game. So uh, this run offense looking to maybe bounce back a little bit. Seattle run defense also needs to bounce back. It was 189 yards to the Dolphins. 
last week with Reggie Bush uh, breaking out against them. So uh, both big uh, factors in this game, the Bears run offense and that Seahawks rush. Well, and of course the other big problem for the Bears is Forte can't go. He's actually Jay Cutler's second favorite target in the passing game. They don't have much beyond Brandon Marshall. It is prediction time, guys. I will start with, uh, we'll, we'll go age before beauty. Executive Editor Dan Arkish, you've got the Seahawks side of it. Who do you like in the game? I've got a tough decision to make here. You know, I really think I look back at that game last year, uh, but I think Seattle has just been so bad on the road. I'm going to go with the Bears. All right, Associate Editor Dan Parr just got beauty. How do you like that? Now, who do you like I'll in the game? <laughs> uh, Russell Wilson, look at the touchdown interception ratio for him. 11 to 0 at home, 6 to 8 on the road. We've been talking about this whole, you know, time we've been discussing this game that the Seahawks just aren't the same team on the road as they are at home. And the offense of the Seattle, the first Seattle just doesn't scare me if I'm the Bears' defense. I think as long as Jay Cutler doesn't have a meltdown game, the Bears get out of this one with a win. Yeah, guys, it's the elite teams in the NFL the Bears don't match up with. Clubs like this, particularly in Chicago, Bears seem to fare pretty well. We don't know about the injuries, but I agree with these guys. I think the Bears find a way to get it done. That'll do it for our preview of the game of the week, week 13. For all the best in news, notes, and analysis, everything you know to enjoy the NFL, stay at ProFootballWeekly.com.